Uh, first off, if you are joining us newly and you've never seen my face before, uh, my name is Nina Neary and I am the co-owner of For You Fitness Customized Personal Training. I am the creator and developer of all of the pretty little recipes that you see feeding onto our pages. Yes, that's me. Um, I absolutely love that part of my job amongst other things. And uh, I am your host of our latest and greatest podcast where we are aiming to provide you with science-based education, knowledge, uh, healthy tips, all of those things that you need in order to get sustainable results. That's what we're all about. I encourage questions. Um, <laughs> Todd, it, I guess it's like being on the radio, although I've never been on the radio. Anyways, um, what we're doing today is I'm going gangbusters on a lot of the clutter out there. There's so much information that we're exposed to from what you see in the magazines to what your next door neighbor tells you. There's so much stuff out there. So I'm just going to try to clear it all a little bit, a little by little. And uh, I'm going to be giving you the God honest truth from my experience, from client experience, and from everything that I know. Um, I want to provide you with a disclaimer. I am not a doctor or a dietitian. And the information that I provide to you is based on my personal experience, my, high, my higher education in the studies of exercise, sport, and science and my experience as a personal trainer and group exercise instructor over the past 12 years plus longer. Um, any recommendations or commentary I make about exercise, nutrition, lifestyle, supplements, or any information I provide to you in person or even online on our website should be discussed with your doctor because every individual is different. Also, the information that you receive in our emails uh, through, our, through our programs and through our services, do not take the place of professional medical advice. So, um, we're gonna get started. Your guest today is going to be me, all right? So take it or leave it, I'm gonna be dishing out all the information for you today. So topic numero uno, the myth of eat less and exercise more. Ladies, I'm talking to you, men, you may think this way as well, however, um, I will say that this idea and this practice is a temporary fix. It is highly likely that you'll probably drop, you know, a couple pounds here and there within the first seven to 10 days. And guess what? You're going to rebound immediately following and you're going to gain all of that weight back. And you're probably going to gain a few more bad and unhealthy habits on top of that. Now, why does this happen? Okay. Eating in a deficit, meaning eating super low calories while working out like a mad person, and I'm referring to those people who work out five to seven days out of the week on top of traditional training, on top of running five miles, on top of biking three miles, 30 plus miles, they just don't stop. Okay, that's the person I'm referring to in combination with consuming lower calories. That is possibly the worst thing that you can do for your metabolism and your energy expenditure, meaning the calories that you burn on a daily basis. And why is that? Well, number one, the body is ridiculously intelligent. You are living in something that will recognize everything that you do to it. It is also going to protect you at all costs. So if you're starving the body, number one, of nutrients when you're under eating, it's gonna know and it's gonna go straight up mama bear on you, okay? It's going to protect you. And any time that you introduce more activity than what you need, it's gonna stress out and it's gonna let you know too. So the side effects of being on a restrictive diet, eating low calorie all the time and over training, Number one, your, your metabolism is gonna respond by decreasing. It's gonna to lower to compensate for the low calories that you're consuming. It thinks it's starving. So your metabolism goes like this. That is not something that we want. So at the end of the day, you know, the body's just trying to conserve the energy 
Again, protection mode. Secondly, when you are going gung-ho every single day, you're gonna be constantly in a fight or flight mode, meaning your body's like this, do something, do something, it's gonna protect, it's gonna do all sorts of things. So when you are in, con you are in that constant state of fight or flight, your body's going to be releasing cortisol and cortisol is that nasty little stress hormone that I constantly talk about with everybody, specifically females, because we're always stressed out about something and that at the end of the day is going to affect us negatively. Um, another thing that happens when cortisol is elevated for extensive periods of times and it's, it's just constantly up there is that you're almost 100% guaranteed to store fat. If cortisol is up a lot, you're likely going to store fat and especially around your midsection. All right. That's something that we don't want. So pay attention because if you know that you have a high stress job, yet you go and you try to um, do a combination of strength training, cardio, abs, circuit, all of that on top of your high stress, stress job, and you notice that you just can't get rid of this belly fat, Ah, that's cortisol talking. Yep, it ain't gonna lie to you. So, um, another thing that is gonna likely happen if you are on low calories for lengthy periods of time is that this is gonna possibly destroy your commitment to any type of program. Number one, you're going to be walking around like a zombie. You're gonna be so tired and people aren't gonna to wanna to hang out with you and you're not gonna to wanna to hang out with them, right? So you're becoming, you're ostracizing yourself already. Number two, you're gonna have extreme mood swings. Yes, mood swings because you're depriving your body of what it needs and you're just overworking it. The body's not happy and it will respond to that. Three, if you try to go into those workout sessions, you're not gonna have a lot of strength. They're gonna be piss poor and you're wasting your time because you're just overworked. So no strength there. And lastly, you're gonna start craving things that you've never craved before. I am a primary example. When I decided to compete for two years straight, before that I had never craved Oreos dipped in chocolate fudge. Never have I craved cheesecake from the Cheesecake Factory. I now will crave anything under the sun that has chocolate on it, anything. And I didn't used to be like that. And it's because I deprived myself. I starved my body of its nutrients that it wanted, that's all. And I don't regret it, but I am now aware of why I crave things. So again, if you're in a deficit, all of these it's going to have side effects and it's really going to impact you truly, especially if you're overworking your body. Number three, you cannot treat your current body like your 20 year old self. Okay. Let's take it back. No, you can't take it back. Meaning you cannot compare your college body, hot body to your current body and how it responds. Your body has changed so much just in the past year your hormones change they do things for different reasons your body responds to different foods for specific reasons so the way bread used to hit you when you were a teenager or in college it's not going to hit you the same way as you are now it's going to hit you 10 times worse yeah unfortunately so Again, your hormones are functioning with a totally different purpose. Um, I was telling a client this morning, you cannot compare, and I was, I'm referencing females, you cannot compare your non-fertile body to fertile myrtle, okay? Two totally different beings. You can't do that. Your body just has significantly changed from the past. Whatever you do, do not pick up that magazine and compare yourself to that 20-something year old who got, again, you don't know where she's coming from what her workout routine is, what she's eating. You don't know any of that, so you cannot compare yourself to somebody who is 100% genetically different from you, okay? Do not do that. It, looking back, will not get you moving in the right direction, okay? Um, so solutions to these ideas, you know, again, if, you, if this has always been in your head, oh, I have to eat less and I have to do more, let's take a step back, okay? So in order to lose weight and to lose fat, 
permanently, I mean permanently, no more yo-yo. We don't do that, okay? Not at For You Fitness. Um, and we don't want you to rebound either, no extreme behaviors. We're gonna start with easing back and winning you off those workouts, okay? Take a few days off. I'm not saying lie on the couch and do absolutely nothing. No, I'm saying if you wanna have rest days, make it active rest, okay? Meaning you can do something like yoga, a brisk walk in the park, go to a cycling class, as long as you're not lifting heavy weights. Um, take it back a notch to where you're not putting more stress on your body. These rest day activities should be good for your mind, they should be good for your heart, good for the soul, but they should not stress you out. Take it back a notch and your body will love you for it. Secondly, if you're gonna go gung-ho during your workouts, meaning full body, I'm, you're doing your 20 minute e-fit session, you better re fuel. My clients can attest to this as well as any other client at For You Fitness. If you do not refuel, you will almost take steps back. You will not reap the benefits of all of the hard work that you put into those workouts. If you do not refuel post-workout, you're likely going to pull from, oh, I don't know, maybe your own muscle. Eh, there's a slight chance of that. Why not refuel eat the good foods, minimum protein, fiber, and fat, those are your BFFs, your PFF, protein, fiber, and fat, minimum, get in a solid post-workout meal so that you can prevent your body from thinking it's straight up in starvation mode, because yes, you are in a deficit on your rest day, but if you bring it up a notch on your workout days, you're going to switch that up so the body will not think it's starving. So it's almost like a shock to the body. Works in your favor, it works in your favor. I promise you it does. Um, also, be mindful that for every rigorous workout, you know, whether it's your EFIT workout or if it's your full body traditional training workout, please understand that the body post-workout is trying to repair and rebuild the muscles that you have broken down. And that process requires energy. And that energy is translated as burned calories, meaning your body is burning calories to recover. It's an amazing thing, but you have to allow the body to recover in order to reap those benefits. It's a science. You break, you build, and you burn. Repeat that over and over. You break, you build and you burn, but you have to respect the recovery periods. So, I think I covered everything for that topic. I'm gonna peek it. <laughs> yes, Gwen, eating less does stink. I'm gonna refer back to our Facebook right now. Um, mood swings. Uh, going back to our mood swings when you eat less, yes, this uh, I'm guilty as charged. If I don't eat right, my body's not right, my head's not right, and I wanna take down an entire cow if I have not eaten enough. That hasn't happened lately, I've made sure I'm well fed, but ladies, if you know that you are under eating, your significant others may be paying the price. So be nice to your significant others by feeding well. Um, those are great comments. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Anything else? All right, well, I think we're good so far. All right, so moving on to uh, topic number two. Eating fat is going to make me fat. Um, I am guilty of thinking this way as well. I have said time and time again, and this is back when, oh, if, you know, if, if I eat less fat, then I'll be eating less calories, which should translate as I'm gonna lose weight, right? Mm, no that 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 doesn't happen that way okay and unfortunately that that theory just does not work for multiple reasons for instance i'm going to refer to your body as a bank account it's not a bank account where you can easily deposit something meaning food and then choose when you want to withdraw it meaning burn it off that does not happen your body is so intricate, it's 
it responds to every little thing that you do to it. It's You could re reference it as a, a chemistry lab. It is so complex. It is just not that easy. Calories in, calories out. All food or all calories are the same. Negative. No, 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 no. Certain foods will tell you to store fat and certain foods will tell you to burn it off. Yes, again, certain foods will tell you to hold on to it and certain foods will tell you, let's burn it off, all right? Case in point, sugar. Oh, Abdullah, I'll get to you in just a minute, okay? Um, sugar. When you consume sugar, what happens? Well, insulin is gonna spike just like this, okay? It's gonna go up. And remember, insulin is that nasty little fat storing hormone. Yeah, it happens. And when it's up like this, at this point, you don't have to be fat in order for this to happen, okay? So at this point, it's up. Insulin is gonna drive all of the fuel in the bloodstream into your fat cells. So everything goes straight to the fat cells, meaning carbs, anything excess, and it's, it's going to be especially driven to your midsection. Yeah, right here, midsection. Uh-uh, not good. And throughout this process, your brain is gonna be stimulated and it's gonna tell you to eat more. Why do you think we crave sugar all the time? Well, if you don't stop eating it, your brain's gonna continue to tell you that. So you feed with sugar, insulin goes up, goes to the bloodstream, into the fat cells, into the midsection, and then your brain's telling you to eat more of it. That's a recipe for disaster, guys. Sugar, I, I hate to call it the devil, but it's right up there. It's not good in combination with fats, okay? Moving into the actual function of a saturated fat, and when I refer to saturated fats, I'm talking about your healthy, anything coming from like a grass-fed, animal, uh, olive oils, coconut oils, anything along the lines of walnuts, you get my drift, okay? The function, and fats have several functions. First off, they're actually going to, when you consume them, they're actually gonna shut off the brain's hunger and craving centers. So you will become more satisfied and your body will think that it's full because you digested and you consumed fat. That's what fat does, good healthy fats. And the thing is, carbs do not have that properties. Just like I mentioned before, carbs slash sugar are going to tell your brain, they're going to send that signal, hey, eat more of me. Why do you think at Thanksgiving you can eat all of this food and you're stuffed to the rim? And then sure enough, Aunt Bessie brings in her something sweet, I don't know, uh, cheesecake pie stuffed with Oreos, topped with peanut butters, and mind you, you're supposed to be full, and you're like, oh, I can definitely do that. Why? Because there's no trigger for sugar. There's no trigger for sugar. You can end eat endlessly. It's a bottomless pit. It's a bottomless pit. So, going back to the function of fat, a second function is that it's actually going to it has a potential to speed up your metabolism and reduce inflammation. So when we ingest healthy fats, while we keep our carbs on the lower end, so high fat, low carb, the body is gonna use that fat as a form of energy. Yeah, it's going to pick it up and use it for energy. And it's not gonna store it. So again, fat is high, carbs are low, the body will pick into that fat and use it for energy. A majority of our clients know about this because this is inputted into our carb cycling program, meaning we cycle, we go high carb, low fat, and then we, we, we roll reverse. So it goes when one is high, one is low, and vice versa. It's kind of an, an amazing anomaly, uh, but it works. And so you can practice this any day of the week, any day of the week, the more the better. Um, but you're gonna be in a fat burning zone. Again, fat burning zone, two thumbs up for that. Uh, and so 
if you think about it, you're in a fat burning zone and you are, it's your rest day. So you're keeping your carbs low, your fats are high, and you have a scheduled workout the next day, that next day, that morning, whatever it is, you are more likely to be in, a, in a, an immensely high fat burning zone because the last thing that you ate wasn't carbs, it was fat. And I refer to the acronym as, as LIFO or LIFO, L-I-F-O, last in, first out. So if you had heavy carbs the night before your workout, you're gonna feel like straight ass, okay? That's gonna pull you down a little bit, but if you had a lighter meal with just protein, fiber, fat, lots of good vegetables, you're gonna be pulling from those fat stores as a form of energy, I guarantee that, all right? So lots of benefits when you keep the carbs lower and your fat high. Don't be afraid of that fat. Um, and then of course, this kind of ties into uh, the ketogenic uh, lifestyle as well as, as well as low carb lifestyle. These are, I mean, they're becoming more prevalent and more prevalent and we encourage a balance of, of, of trying these things along with the carb cycling, but you, at the end of the day, you gotta do what works for you. You have to do and you have to respond to how your body responds to carbs and to fats. So, solutions for getting this idea out of your head that fat is the devil and it's gonna make me fat is number one, we want you to gradually incorporate fat and let's say your rest days, okay? So again, when I, as I mentioned before, we keep your fats higher, your carbs lower, and try that out for size, okay? You may be pleasantly happy and it's gonna be a good thing. I absolutely love extra fats on my rest day because I feel like I'm cheating, but I'm really not because I'm keeping my carbs lower but I'm making up for it with healthy fats like almond butter, avocado, cooking my eggs in coconut oil, all those yummy things, at least I think they're yummy, that keeps me full and happy. So, hmm? oh comments, hi. Oh hi Kimberly, love you too. Um, all right, okay. Um, so again, I'm gonna move on to some, some solutions and I'll get to some questions, how about that? So. Another solution if you're still fearful of fats is mm, I would limit your consumption of any items that are low fat or fat free. If you're not on board yet and you're not full on, full fat, limit the consumption of these fat free, low fat items. Why? Because they're gonna be full of artificial fillers, chemicals, preservatives, all to boost the flavor and to keep the shelf life. And this means that there are foreign bodies that you're consuming in here, and so it's gonna affect your gut in I don't know how many different ways, and you're just gonna cause more stress to your digestion. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants an upset, an upset stomach. I know I don't. So um, another way to kind of fight this mentality is that if you're the type of person that's constantly hungry and you're eating every, you know, couple hours and you just you know you just you can't get past well that's gonna that's gonna be the the cure-all first try swapping a carb that you have during that meal for a fat okay start small so we're, we'll example breakfast let's say your first meal is egg whites uh, a piece of toast and some fruits and you find that two hours later you're starving Marvin well let's start with either swapping out the piece of bread or the fruit. You don't need both, and especially if it's not on a workout day, you don't need them. Bertha, I'll get to your question in just a second, okay? Um, so, going back to your first meal, instead of just your egg whites, why don't you try whole eggs? And if that's too much, balance it out, okay? Do one egg white, one whole egg. Don't be afraid of that. That yolk is the good stuff, the good nutrients. Shame on those people for shaming whole eggs. Um, or you can cook your egg whites maybe in coconut oil. So add a little, add a little bit more fat to it gradually. And you'll find that um, if you even add leafy green vegetables, Brussels sprouts, kale, spinach, you're going to be full. And that meal is gonna hold you over for longer. It's gonna sustain you so that you're not eating again in the next two hours. Um, so 
try those things out for size and see how it goes. Again, at the end of the day, listen to your body and don't demonize fats when they're actually, they can work in your favor. So I'm gonna take a time out to uh, answer a couple questions here. Um, Abdullah had asked, what's the best food to eat post-workout for energy to use to recover? Awesome question. Uh, I am a sucker for the same meal post-workout and just for a few reasons, the simplicity. So my normal post-workout meal is any type of lean meat, and for me, easy, it's chicken breast, we'll, we'll grill out over the weekend, in combination with some baked sweet potatoes or roasted sweet potatoes. You cook them however you want. They have so many nutrients, it's ridiculous. Um, my green of choice would be Brussels sprouts. Love me some greens. And I'm gonna add at least half an avocado. So I've got complex carbs, I've got fibrous veggies, and I've got a healthy fat along with my protein. So I'm ref refueling with a little bit of everything because I earned it. I expended those calories and now I'm gonna refuel. Now, you always have the option of swapping, let's say that sweet potato for more fibrous vegetables if you don't wanna go heavy on the carbs. So for instance, you can add um, more eggplant to it, more peppers, more onions, make it vibrant, make, make it colorful. Um, that'll take you a long way. And if you're not a big fan of vegetables, then you better load up on more complex carbs, uh, especially if you are a male and you did some heavy lifting, quinoa, sweet potatoes, anything like brown rice pasta, amaranth, anything like that is gonna work in your favor. So think proteins for sure, carbs, moderate, fibrous vegetables, okay, absolutely a must, and a little bit of fat will go a long way. You don't have to have fat, but just sneak it in there every once in a while. So great question, Abdullah. Um, Bertha, should we eat more small meals versus bigger meals? I'm getting to that right now. All right, so this is moving into our last topic of conversation, which is, oh, one second. One second. Okay. The myth of small meals every couple of hours is gonna stoke your metabolism. Yes, you've heard it everywhere, you've seen it everywhere, you've seen it in fitness magazines. I, I too have done this. I did it for two years. I've been on both sides of the fence of this topic of conversation, so I'm happy to help with this um, combo. Uh, I will say before I get into it that use this information for, for whatever you need. You don't have to do this. You don't have to listen to my ad advice. Um, do what works for you. Okay, so moving forward with that. As a former follower of this small meals every two hours, um, I, again, I did this for about two years straight, I can tell you that my life revolved around food. And I would be asking myself, because I was starving all the time, when's my next meal? Um, has it been two hours? Uh, is it 12 o'clock yet? And oh my gosh, what am I gonna do if I cannot take my Tupperware with me? What, what if I can't pack them? Is there a refrigerator somewhere? Is there a cooler somewhere? Do you have a freezer? Um, can I eat my chicken here? And my family can attest to this. I straight up brought my Tupperware of chicken, actually it was a snack bag of three ounces of chicken, into church and I ate it because it was 12 o'clock as, as my priest is talking about something. Yep, I pulled out my chicken as the priest was, was talking. And looking back, I cannot believe how incredibly um, moronic that was because I just had to eat. Um, but I'm learning, I'm, I'm still learning. So problem number one with this small meals every uh, couple hours is that it's just not realistic, nor is it sustainable for the average person. And again, I'm talking to a person who works nine to five, whatever, eight to six, if you're a full-time mommy, if you have a life, um, this lifestyle is just simply not going to work, with you, work for you because you don't have the time to be glued to the clock, nor do you have time to be eating all day. It just doesn't happen. So what, I mean, honestly, the reason I made it work is because I was a trainer and I lived in the gym. If your lifestyle revolves around training and eating, sure, by all means, have at that lifestyle, you go get them. You go around with your six pack bag and you get them. I don't want any part of that. 
I ain't got time for all that. So, uh, it's just not realistic, again, for the average person. Problem number two, feeding frequently. Bertha, listen up. Eating so often, all the time, and <laughs> I should call out my mother for this one, um, you're going to have some type of insulin response. And insulin, remember, it's that fat storing hormone, ugly little thing. And so every t think about it, every time you eat, every two hours, insulin's gonna go up, insulin's gonna go up, driving you up this way. Guys, that's not a good thing. Let me continue, okay? Problem number three, feeding all day, sun up to sundown, your digestion never gets a break. It is constantly trying to burn off what you are feeding it and break it down and process it constantly. Every two hours, it probably hasn't even been, it hasn't even completed its digestion from the earlier sitting. So what that means is because it's constantly working and it's distressed all the time, an overworked digestion is likely to lead to some type of dysfunction internally later on. Point blank, you're overworking it, over overdoing it. It's just too much for the body. Remember, too much on the body leads to stress. Stress leads to the increase in cortisol. Cortisol is that nasty, again, hormone that causes you to store fat just like insulin. Guys, cyclical, it's 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 inevitable for it to happen if you're constantly stressing out like that and and just doing too much, too much. And I'll explain. So, um, a couple solutions. Um, <laughs> Bertha, yes, I know you went in the bags of food. Um, I would say, you know, solution to this, yes, eat according to your lifestyle. Um, great point, Bertha. Uh, you can always, always go small, then go big. Go small, then go big. You can always consolidate. Okay, think about you know, to save time, why not combine two to three of your meals and save yourself the headache of packing three of those tiny little Tupperwares. Put it all in one. Now, obviously you may not finish it because your body's not used to it, but allow yourself to get adjusted to bigger quantities, quantities of food. And I know that, you know, for instance, my mom, she just, she can't eat a lot. And that's just what she's used to. So she eats every two hours. But guess what? What I hear her say every two hours, I'm hungry. Well, mom, why do you think? And that's also attributed to other things. But she's just eating super, super tiny meals. Um, try to get her to change that. Yeah, ain't happening. Uh, <laughs> I love you, mama. Um, bigger portions are okay. And you just need to listen to your body, allow your body to properly digest everything. And if you can f not eat something for three to, four, three to four hours after that meal, awesome. You've given your body a break and you're allowing your body to process your food. And so when it's, when it's time to burn calories, your body's gonna pull from your stored fat, from your freezer. Listen to this, when you eat, and you're constantly shoving food in your mouth. All that food's going into your refrigerator, okay? Picture the refrigerator. Now, at the bottom of the refrigerator, which is the hard to get to place, is your fat, right here. Fat, fat, fat. So if you're constantly feeding, and you need to pull out, meaning it's time to burn calories, you're gonna pull from the freezer first. You're not gonna be able to touch the fat. It's gonna stay in the freezer. It is locked there because you have overloaded the refrigerator. Overloaded by feeding it all the time and too much. So in order to tap into the freezer, we gotta give the refrigerator a break, put a pause on the refrigerator, give yourself some time so that we can access the freezer. If again, if you're constantly feeding, you will never have access to your stored fat. Never, ever, ever will you get there. If you're constantly feeding it, excess carbs, eating all the time, overeating, things like that, you will never get to tap into that stored fat. So keep that in mind. Uh, another possible solution for somebody, uh, you're trying to figure out how to go from tiny meals to a little bit bigger, is what we call intermittent fasting. Um, I'd say all of our For You Fitness clients are at least somewhat familiar with this technique. 
and it works wonders if you practice it in a in a moderate amount nothing extreme um, I'll tell you right now I'm still fasting not intentionally this late but when I break my fast I'm gonna have a giant meal because my body is used to it okay so an easy way and a free way of moving along and, and, and eliminating those tiny meals is to try intermittent fasting. And all that means is that you're choosing when to eat and when to fast. And a majority of your fasting is actually done while you sleep. So say for instance, I tell you, okay, we're gonna recommend that a female fast for um, 14 hours. Eight of that 14 hours is done while you're sleeping. Hopefully you sleep longer. And so the rest of it, it just kind of rolls through the morning. So while in the morning and you're not eating, your body can start pulling from your stored fat. Why? Because you haven't fed it. Give your body a break so that it can get into that stored fat. Easy. And you benefit from it too. It's a win-win. Now, you don't have to fast daily. No, God forbid you do not have to stick to this strict regimen of, oh, I can only eat at 12 o'clock and I have to stop eating at 8 o'clock and that's it. Negative. You listen to your body. You will have good days. You will have bad days. You will have under eaten some days, so you need to eat a little bit earlier the next day. Or if you know you, you had a party last night and you ate and you drank and you did things you weren't supposed to, guess what? You can fast longer the next day to make up for it. Give your digestion a break. Allow your body to recover. And that is the most natural cleanse out there is a fast. Again, it does not have to be extreme. Start in small increments, then go from there. I will tell you that I only eat twice a day and I give myself at least three to four hours in between my meals so that my body can digest it properly. And so I don't have to think about anything else but my two meals per day. It's kind of a luxury. You should try it. Um, lastly, I will tell you that, and, and keep this in mind, that in the morning, your insulin levels are at their peak. They are at the highest point that they can be. So they're on, they're on hyperdrive in the morning. So the last thing that you should probably do, be doing is adding in sugar or carbs into that mix because it's just gonna, it's gonna be a domino effect. Uh, not, not only are you gonna spike your insulin even more, causing that fat storing hormone to go crazy, but you're gonna be hungry, of course, less than an hour later, and your body will never have a chance to burn fat because you just kept your insulin up and then you're gonna keep it up again as you eat again. So keep in mind, your body's natural response is to have a, a higher level of insulin in the morning. It's kind of a fight or flight response. When you first wake up, it's trying to get you up. So the last thing that you wanna do is feed into the carb craving. 99% um, of the time, if you have that hunger pain deep down inside, you're not actually hungry, you're dehydrated and thirsty. You've gone six to eight hours without drinking any water. I touched on this in the last podcast. Try drinking eight to 10 ounces of water. That pain will subside and guess what? You can fast for at least another hour or so, or at least two or three or four. Drink some water, try it, okay? Again, consolidate your meals, try to implement a little bit of intermittent fasting and it's a win-win. You're gonna to continue to burn that stored fat if you allow your body to, number one, have time to digest the food and then just give it a break, give it a break. Um, so in closing, and I'll get to your questions in just a second, I want to sum up today's podcast, okay? Breaking those myths. Uh, number one, eating less and working out more is not gonna get you results at the end of the day. It is a temporary fix that is likely going to cause unhealthy habits, and just terrible behavior. Why waste your time doing that, okay? Ease back a little bit. Number two, we do not want to demonize fats. No, 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 they are not the enemy. They are not the enemy. They can actually work for you. They can work for you. And number three, you don't have to eat all the time to get your metabolism ripped. It works for some people, don't get me wrong. It works like a charm. But for a lot of people, 
it doesn't and you don't need to, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, remember, again, every piece of information that I provided today for you, hopefully it was a little helpful. Um, this depends on your lifestyle, your preference, everything that you do is so individual based. So just take it like a grain of salt, apply it. If it doesn't work, you move on. Um, stay tuned for our next podcast, but for now, I'm going to hit up the questions. If you have more questions, please send them my way. Otherwise, that's going to be a wrap for Mythbusters number one. Um, and you'll likely hear some more myth, but some more Mr's, Mr's of Buff. Yeah, no, uh, myth busters in our next podcast but um, uh, give me some comments ask questions and hopefully those questions lead into the next podcast uh, all right so let's see Mike RC thank you for joining us today you're awesome I'm trying to stream through these here let's see let's see uh, Daniel thanks Daniel you're so sweet uh, let's see Hey, boo boo, I cannot see any more comments. Is there no more comments? Okay. All right. Um, again, thank you guys for joining. You've been a great audience, and it was awesome talking to you on the 4th of July. Uh, have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Stay indoors because it's kind of wretchedly hot. Um, again, Nina Nira here, uh, your host for our For You Fitness podcast. Send us emails with your questions. We are here to help. And again, thanks for joining, and I'll catch you guys later.